When I was about 20, my grandmother gave me her old car when she got a new one. I was thrilled at the prospect of more independence. But my parents forbade me from taking it with me when I moved away because I'd be too focused on getting my license to look for a job. Make sense? No? Well, they were adamant in that, and while the car was a gift to me, it's in my father's name for whatever reason. I was furious. This was my gift, and by not being able to take it with me, that limited my job options to places I could only walk to. Thankfully, my boyfriend ended up being able to drive me to work. I don't know what I'd do without him. I relented due to not wanting to cause conflict. My parents aid and neglected me. They deny this as well as anything else they've ever done wrong. I'm terrified of them, my mother especially. Every attempt to stand up with them has been met with catastrophic failure. A few months later, my golden child brother forgets to change the oil in his car, so it's busted. My parents loan him my car without even giving me a heads up first. They deny not telling me. My brother is a terrible driver, as evidence on Christmas morning where he informed me that he'll give me $5,000 in May and keep my Subaru 2010 legacy. I asked what prompted this. He took off the passenger side mirror going up a hill and took off the mirror of the car he hit. I get mad at him for damaging my property. I say, I'm not taking your money. I want my car. He gets pissed. Last time he got pissed, I was in the car with him and he pulled over in the middle of nowhere to scream threatened to hurt me and hit the dashboard, steering wheel, etc. And later on, when I tried to escape when he pulled into a parking lot, presumably to talk, he drove back into traffic with me hanging halfway out of the car. So, yeah. And he recently punched a hole through a window. So, yeah. I'm beyond angry. I plan to give brother two months to give my car back. He's almost had it a year. My dad finds out about this plan and sits me down with mom to discuss it. But you're not using the car. But that's not fair to him. But you're being unreasonable. But technically, you don't own the car. I do. But, but, but. Dad tells me that he and brother discussed the whole $5,000 thing. They decided on a price, on my gift, without telling me. It's not about the car at this point, Dad. You always stick up for him and not for me. I feel disrespected constantly by you guys. And what? We don't disrespect you. How could you say that? I list an example, begging him several times to not give me unsolicited dietary advice. I'm in recovery from an eating disorder, and that kind of crap triggers it. He knows this. I've had to beg and beg because this kind of crap can make me relapse and be hospitalized. I quote, Well, sorry for being a parent. I break down and tell them what happened with brother and I when he threatened me. They're shocked. They tell me I should have told them. Why didn't I tell them? Well, remember when I told you guys I got S.A.? You yelled at me because I froze instead of beating the 6 foot 5 inch man up and told me my inaction let him A more women. Why would I tell you anything? They have a new perspective on the issue. They understand that I don't want my brother to have any leverage over me. They get it. Well, they say that. But I know them. They were planning to give my brother the car all along. They decided on a price. Before I even got wind of it, I lost. I got advice to take the money and let them have the car, and it makes sense. But I hate that they've won my gift, that I can't even have my car back. I'm beyond done. I've been disrespected, humiliated, manipulated, B, broken. I'm just broken. My grandma's gift, and I lost it before I even knew it. They've taken everything, the car, my childhood, my dignity, everything. I'm broken. Yep, do take that money and walk away from them with your head high. They just made it sweeter by buying you out and cutting you free of them. You are free and do not ever have to look back. Your GC brother will wreck that car soon enough and it will be on your dad's insurance. So guess who has to pay? Not you. They bought you out, remember? It's dad's problem now, and GC brother. Just think, for five grand, you can buy yourself a car that no one can take from you, and you don't have to share. It is just your car, in your name. That's a pretty freeing thought, isn't it? Take the money and cut them off forever. If grandma is still around, tell her exactly what's going on. 
Maybe she can get your father to finally put it in your name and take the car instead of the money. But either way, these people don't respect you and don't deserve you in their lives. You're worth so much more than this. My wife, 23, and I, 27, are expecting. She's due this month and things have been a bit intense recently with her being extra hormonal. We live in a different state than my family. My wife and I couldn't visit for Christmas. My parents were calling to continue complaining about us not spending Christmas with them and demanded I make it up for them. I said I was open for any suggestions they had and they suggested they come stay with us for a week once the baby is born. That way, they could spend time with us and the baby as well. I thought, why not? That seemed like a pretty good suggestion, since it's been months since we've seen each other. So, I told them to go ahead and made the invitation official. This morning, my wife was talking about her plans once the baby is here, and that's when I remembered my conversation with my parents. I immediately told her that I agreed to let them come over for a week once the baby is born, to make up for the holiday we missed with them. She first looked shocked, then freaked out at me, saying I shouldn't have invited them just like that without talking to her first. I asked why not, since she loves them and loves being around them, but she explained that my family can be a lot of work, and having them as guests while caretaking for a newborn is the last thing she wanted. I told her it was no big deal. Besides that, we could use help. If she thought about it this way, but she lashed out on me about how the first few days of the baby's life is essential time for bonding and being intimate, and I just took that away from her by inviting my parents and invading her space. I argued that she was being melodramatic right then, because my family are decent people, and I'm pretty sure they'll make this experience a lot more warm, but she still disagreed and said if my family were decent, then they wouldn't have accepted my invitation. But I clarified to her that I did not invite them, and this was in fact a suggestion made by them, and I just agreed after they complained about me missing spending the holidays with them. She went off on me, demanding I call them and cancel everything I planned with them, but I thought that was unacceptable since she gave me not a good enough reason for me to do that, and besides, my parents can help, but she still denied that being true. She's gone radio silent for the rest of the day, and is acting like my family are somehow making her uncomfortable, though they're not the judgmental or intrusive type and are just about spending time with each other. Am I the a-hole? Yes, the a-hole. Until you push a human out of your body and suffer the physical consequences of it, you absolutely don't get to mansplain that it is no big deal and not a good enough reason. Your wife will just have pushed a fair-sized melon out of her body there's a good chance she will have been torn or cut. There's a good chance she won't be able to sit down. She will potentially be in a diaper and have walnut-sized clots of blood coming out of her. There is a chance that the bathroom will not be guest ready after she has been in there because it will look like an abattoir. Are you cleaning up every time she goes in there? Her milk will come in on about day five, which is often extremely painful causes a huge hormonal surge, and causes the milk blues. Her nipples will not yet have hardened up and might crack and bleed. Your baby may be an angel, but then again, it may not. Your wife might be feeding very, very frequently, meaning she won't sleep, she will be exhausted, look like crap, and cry a lot. You think none of this is a good reason not to want to host guests? In short, the only people who should be staying with you are people who have seen her naked, and could actually help her in the bathroom, like her mother, sister, or husband. Hold on. Edit a few things, so there's no misunderstanding here, alright? First of all, wife doesn't normally have an issue with my parents being around. They all get along pretty good. And second of all, which is an important info, my wife and I talked about having her directly speak to them about why she would rather postpone their visit, so we could clear the air. But she refused and said she doesn't want to ruin her relationship with them and asked me to do it, tell them not to come. But since my family are upset with me, then me telling them not to come might be taken in an offensive way. You know what I'm saying? So it really feels like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. Also, to all the people saying that my wife shouldn't be hosting guests, I don't recall mentioning this nor expecting her to do anything for the family. Matter of fact, I really thought we could maybe use their help, especially my mom.
My mom wants the Christmas gift she gave me back. Apparently, the gift I got was not nice enough. It was a wine gift box with a few things and a Starbucks cup with hot chocolate. Spent about $40. I know that it's not much money, but it's what I could afford, and since she likes wine and hot chocolate, I thought it'd be a good gift. I am a stay-at-home mom and we live on one income. She knows that we don't have much money at the moment. She also knows I have a lot of nieces, nephews I need to buy for as well as my own daughter. She spends endlessly and doesn't have any concept of money and also hasn't had to work for the past 15 years. She texted me today saying the gift she got me and my significant other was for my sibling that she had made a mistake. I said, well, the box was addressed to me and that it was what my dad said they were getting us a few months ago. We didn't ask for anything specific or expect any particular thing. I called my dad and he said that she feels that her gifts were all so cheap and feel slighted. That she does and buys everything for everyone and goes above and beyond all the time. She's apparently delusional because this is totally not the case. She will actually lie and say she bought stuff for other people and spend it on herself. Every year she is miserable no matter what. Last year when I had the funds, I spent $100 plus on her. We had a lot of changes this year. New baby, new house, other unexpected expenses. And this was my first year not working. She made it out that I did this on purpose and now wants me to give the gift to my sibling who spent the most on her. I don't know how else to explain or show her that's all I could afford. It wasn't malicious. I do remember when we were younger, she always threw away the gifts we got her at the school Santa's workshop because it was all junk. Fake jewelry, candles, little mom things. Edit. I mentioned that I guess to show that I know she could be unappreciative and hateful. In recent years, I was able to afford better gifts and it hasn't been much of an issue. I was definitely caught off guard by her asking for the gift back because she didn't like what I got her. My significant other and dad say she is being ridiculous and to keep it, but I don't want it at this point. What would you do? Give it back or keep it? Refuse to return it because duck her, but re-gift or sell as you wish. Give it to her next year for Christmas and never exchange gifts with her again. I hope she is beside herself with envy at the gifts you give to others. My, 30, brother, 26, has a puppy. He refuses to train it, discipline it, or even put it up when my son comes over. My son is one and is starting to develop a fear of dogs because every time we go for a visit, the dog jumps all over him and knocks him down. My family thinks it's cute and funny, but it makes my blood boil because he might get hurt. But that's not the only thing. It barks constantly. You move slightly, it barks. You stand up too fast, it barks. You breathe heavily, it barks. It barks and growls at my son every time he makes a noise, laughs, babbles, or anything, and it scares him. But again, they think it's cute and funny. They refuse to see that they are doing harm to my son and continue to do nothing about the dog's behavior. On Christmas, I finally snapped and put the dog outside to get it away from my kid. Literally just picked it up, set it in the fenced-in backyard, and closed the door. It was nice and quiet for all of five minutes, but apparently, that was just the worst possible crime I could have committed, and I was scolded like a child for trying to keep my son calm and happy while he played with his toys. No more than five seconds after being let back in, the dog knocked my son over trying to steal his stuffies. I've tried addressing this, but my parents take his side every time, saying, oh, your brother doesn't have kids, so she's just like his daughter, or maybe you should just keep E, my son, up off the floor. No, he's only one. He plays on the floor. Plus, that pet parent crap is weird. He calls his dog his dog turn, and his in-laws go along with it. It's not even like he can't have his own kids. His wife just doesn't like them. I've had a rocky relationship with my family before, but I think this is just outright disrespectful and weird. How do I set boundaries and enforce them? I don't want to avoid my family just because I don't like their dog, but it's getting obnoxious. Edit. My brother doesn't live there, it's my folks house. He just brings the dog every time he comes, which is whenever the family gets together. They're more than happy to accommodate and set up a doggy bed 
put its toys in a bin and give it roam of the house. But when I bring my son, it's don't leave him on the floor or just hold him like the dog matters more. My parents' place is a neutral place, as my dad describes it. But instead, they're siding with my brother that we put the baby up and not the dog. Asking to keep the dog in another room while the baby is playing on the floor doesn't really seem like a big request. I guess asking how I set boundaries wasn't really fair or the right question. I just need input on how to handle the issue. Stop bringing your son around the dog. Full stop. If your family wants to see your son, they can visit you, minus the dog. I'm 23, and the mother, obviously. To preface, I'm exclusively breastfeeding my child, and he is six months old. Father is not in the picture. My sister, let's call her Cindy, is 26. She got married, and of course, I was invited. It was a really nice ceremony, and I was in the front row. I brought an extra bottle because I didn't think the ceremony would be too long. Just after she walked down the aisle to the altar, my son started to loudly cry. I thought he was hungry, so I started to breastfeed him. I quieted him and thought all was well. Figured it was no big deal because it was better than the alternative of him crying. However, the wedding was being filmed by a videographer, and I'm in plain view. My sister immediately after the ceremony was pissed because she saw it. I assured her that I'm probably not in the video, but I am. She said it doesn't matter if I'm in the video or not, because it's trashy either way. She said I ruined her special day. She asked me to leave instead of joining the reception. My mother says that I should apologize to her and admit I was wrong. She also says I should buy her something else off her registry that wasn't purchased to make amends. My mother also says I should have excused myself and my child to the restroom. I don't think this should be such an issue because I'm only doing what's natural. She knows I have a child and she knows I only breastfeed. Children were explicitly allowed. I even verified by asking if I could bring my baby son. So am I the a-hole? I'm not sure what to do. This was two weeks ago and I haven't spoken with my sister at all. A gentle yes the a-hole. It's perfectly okay to breastfeed in public, but the front row of your sister's wedding seems like a stretch. You had a small baby at a wedding. You should have sat near the back so you could have taken the baby out if they started crying for whatever reason with minimal interruption to the ceremony. Everyone I know who has brought babies or children to weddings have always sat near the back to be able to discreetly tend to their children's needs with minimal disruption to the ceremony. I'm all about allowing breastfeeding in public. It's natural. Babies shouldn't have to eat under a hot blanket and all that stuff. But I think front row during a wedding ceremony may just not be the time. You probably should have excused yourself as quietly as possible to another room. I know it sucks, but when you have a baby, you sometimes have to do that. Gentle, yes the a-hole.